On December 5th, 2019, the FBI rounded up 60 members of the Latin Kings across the East Coast, including the boss who was linked to the Genovese crime family and who ran the gang, much like La Cosa Nostra. 40-year-old Michael Cacciatelli, the East Coast leader of the almighty Latin King and Queen Nation, who also went by the name King Merlin, ran and organized the gang much like the Italian much like the Italian mafia of old. He structured it with a mafia style hierarchy, including a council of leaders and as many as eleven chapters across Massachusetts. The leadership approach has become a model for other Latin Kings regions in the country. On that day, more than the sixty members that were rounded up, they were charged federally with racketeering, drug and firearms charges including the leaders of the street gang's East Coast operations. Authorities seized dozens of firearms, thousands of dollars worth of cash, drugs, and vehicles, and three properties in the crackdown. Five Investigates is looking at the man who allegedly runs the Latin Kings gang on the East Coast, and he has ties to the Italian mob. Mike Baudet discovered that Mike Cacciatelli is no stranger to authorities, Mike. That's right, Maria. The FBI says Michael Cacciatelli rose to the top of the organization even after he was charged and sent to prison more than a decade ago for his involvement in the Latin Kings. Michael Cacciatelli is the 40-year-old Italian man who's in charge of the almighty Latin Kings and Queen Nation, known as King Merlin, and based in Springfield, authorities say he's the supreme East Coast regional overseer of the Latin Kings, reigning over 14 states from Massachusetts to Florida. Cacciatelli has blood ties to the Italian mob, the Genovese crime family based in New York that also operates in Springfield which may explain this. We believe under Cacciatelli's leadership, the Eastern region of the Latin Kings is currently structured, organized, and run like La Cosa Nostra. They have evolved from a traditional street gang to a large scale criminal enterprise superimposed with mafia style rule. According to the U.S. attorney, that includes robbery, assault, and murder. Among the many charges Cacciatelli is facing, he's accused of trying to kill two fellow gang members in bad standing who disrespected his leadership. Well, it's a big hit precisely because we are able to take out nearly all of the leadership. But Cacciatelli has been in this tight spot before, charged with more than two dozen others back in 2005 for their involvement in the Latin Kings. It was part of a crackdown that supposedly crippled the organization. But after being sentenced to 37 months in prison, Cacciatelli returned, rising to the top spot. Authorities hope this time will be different. The FBI says Cacciatelli is the conduit between the Latin Kings in East Coast states and the national leadership based in Chicago, and that under his direction, the influence of the Latin Kings has grown throughout Massachusetts, leading to an increase in shootings and violence in this state. Mike Bodette, Five Investigators. We also have this breaking news. Federal agents carried out more raids this afternoon in a crackdown on the Latin Kings gang. Police seized dozens of weapons and more than 60 alleged gang members face hundreds of charges. WBZ Chief Investigator Cheryl Fiandaka is here now with the details. Cheryl? Latin Kings is one of the largest criminal organizations in the world and has ties to the Italian mob. The Latin kings and queens adopted a level of structure and order that's traditionally used by the mafia. Agents seized guns, drugs, property, and money in a series of coordinated raids. The U.S. attorney said agents infiltrated the highest levels of the gang's leadership and prevented at least eight murders. Among those arrested, the alleged leader of the East Coast operations, Michael Ciccatelli, a Springfield man who the FBI says is connected to the Genovese crime family. 73 suspects in all are charged in the wide-ranging RICO indictment. The FBI says the violent gang members were involved in murders, stabbings, shootings, drug dealing, and witness intimidation. Some of the suspects are already in custody on other charges, including Sean Harrison, a former English high dean called the Rev. Harrison was convicted of shooting a teenager who he recruited to sell marijuana for him. King Rev 
was intercepted on jail calls, continuing efforts to identify and eliminate witnesses against him and the Kings. However, our work is not done. While today's arrests strike at the core of this organization, the inclination of gang members to use firearms to protect their drug profits and settle scores requires constant vigilance. The eye says it also recovered two missing teenagers in today's raids. If convicted on the RICO and drug trafficking charges, the defendants could face between 20 years and life. Federal prosecutors today announced the arrest of more than 60 members of the Latin Kings gang, and their reputed leader is from Springfield. The FBI and the Massachusetts U.S. Attorney's Office announced the arrest today as part of a five-year operation known as Operation Thrown Down. U.S. Attorney Andrew Lelling said the criminal activity in the the eastern region was led by 40 year old Michael Cacciatelli, who's from Springfield and is also known within the gang as King Merlin. Lelling said Cacciatelli was the link between each of the eastern region states and the Latin Kings national leadership in Chicago. Under the calculating leadership of Michael Cacciatelli, a 40 year old Italian man from Springfield with blood ties to the Genovese crime family. The Latin kings and queens adopted a level of structure and order that's traditionally used by the mafia. Federal agents also seized dozens of guns, including an AR-15, a MAC-10, and an MP5 submachine gun. Those arrested face racketeering, drug, and firearms charges. We've posted the names and charges of all the arrested individuals on WWL. Suspects are facing charges in connection with the Latin Kings gang following a series of arrests this morning in Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, in New Jersey. The arrests were aimed at the East Coast leadership in the gang. Officials say that the gang's East Coast overseer is from here in Springfield, along with several others charged. Western Mass News reporter Audrey Russo joins us in the studio with more. Audrey? Michael Cacciatelli of Springfield was at the top of the FBI's chart, which they showed at a press conference today. That chart showed the organizational structure for the East Coast Latin Kings. This isn't the first time officials say they've charged Cacciatelli in connection with the nationally known gang. It is one of the largest criminal organizations in the world with literally thousands of members. More than 60 people are facing charges Thursday in connection with the Latin Kings gang, a national gang with East Coast and Massachusetts branches. This according to the FBI and U.S. Attorney's Office, who also say the East Coast leader, Michael Cacciatelli, is from Springfield. Under Cacciatelli's leadership, the influence of the Latin Kings has grown throughout Massachusetts leading to an increase in shootings and violence in our cities and towns. Michael Cacciatelli is 40 years old, and officials say he was the conduit between the regional Latin Kings chapter and national leadership. Officials say taking Cacciatelli down involved four years of investigation. We successfully infiltrated the organization at its highest levels, secretly recording chapter, state, and East Coast level meetings. According to documents released by the U.S. Attorney's Office, through those recordings and by tracking messages, law enforcement says they found Cacciatelli reportedly threatening violence. I want to thank the U.S. Attorney for getting these individuals into federal court where they're going to see some real time and they're not going to be slapped on the wrist as they are in the district courts. Back in 2005, the U.S. Attorney's Office confirms Michael Cacciatelli was charged, then in his 20s, as part of an investigation into the Latin Kings. Western Mass News covered his arrest in depth back then. Authorities confirm he was sentenced to 37 months in jail. Federal officials say four others from Springfield were charged in Thursday's Operation Thrown Down as well. They say it was a targeted effort to capture leaders within the organization accused of serious crimes. Murder, robbery, assault, witness intimidation, and firearms and drug trafficking offenses. Now, those charged could be looking at anywhere from three years of supervised release for offenses like drug trafficking and up to 20 years in prison for racketeering and corrupt organization, otherwise known as RICO, charges. Live in studio, Audrey Russo for Western Mass. Now at 10, the former East Coast overseer of the Latin Kings has pleaded guilty to drug and racketeering charges. Prosecutors say 41-year-old Michael Cacciatelli of Springfield led the Latin Kings criminal activity along the East Coast and served as a conduit between the Eastern Region and the Latin Kings national leadership in Chicago. 
Cacciatelli was arrested in Springfield back in December of 2019 alongside 62 other alleged members of the Latin Kings. According to the acting U.S. attorney for Massachusetts, Cacciatelli pled guilty to a RICO conspiracy charge, which could result in a sentence of up to 20 years of prison and a fine of $250,000. The sentence date is set for July 8th. What's going on, you guys? Welcome back. Another episode of Greenlit Gang TV. Appreciate you guys checking out the channel. Today, we're going to be going across the country with it. We've been doing a lot of stuff out of California lately. Today, we're going to be going to Massachusetts, in particular, Springfield, Massachusetts. So, uh, we're going to be covering a really interesting story uh, with the Latin Kings, in particular, uh, the East Coast version or the, the chapters of the Latin Kings. But we're focusing on Springfield, Massachusetts, which is where our kind of, we should say, main character comes out of. Um, so the almighty Latin King and Queen Nation was developed in 1954 in Chicago, Illinois. It was predominantly a Puerto Rican gang. And, uh, you know, just like a lot of these street gangs, it originally was for strength in numbers, people with a common bond, people that wanted to protect one another, look out for one another, you know, but from there, just like a lot of these other ones, it, it goes in the more street way of things, money-making violence and, uh, it's become known worldwide. Uh, I did a couple videos on these guys. What's really interesting about the one we're covering today is this indictment that came down in December of 2019. Their leader, uh, the, the, basically the leader of this indictment, was a guy by the name of David Cacciatelli. And, you know, when you hear Latin King, and all these stories I've done, these are people of Latin American descent. And David Cacciatelli did not really fit that bill. Um, and Springfield, Massachusetts played a big part in that. So in the greater Springfield mass area, the melding of organized crime groups has some front and center, have come front and center in recent headlines. Now remember, East Coast, Massachusetts, stuff like this, the mafia, Italian mob is, I don't care what they say, it's still prevalent today, but even more so back in the 80s and 90s, stuff like that. Um, man, this is where the mobsters are, especially on the East Coast. I mean, they're everywhere, okay? But... God, man, it, it, Massachusetts, Springfield, Mass, you know, it's like that's just notorious for that kind of stuff. New York, I mean, that's just where it's at. So anyway, um, it was a melting pot for organized crime. And what happened was a lot of these organized crimes, so Latin Kings are there, you got the Italian mafia there, and this indictment comes down December 5th of 2019. 60 defendants that are identified as Latin Kings leaders by the FBI. It was, the indictment gets unsealed, resulting in dozens of arrests linked to the allegations of murder plots, assaults, drug and gun trafficking. Okay. The alleged regional boss, Michael Cacciatelli, a.k.a. King Merlin, who was 40 years old at the time of the indictment. That's born. That means he was born in 1979 for all you slow MFers out there. Just kidding. But he was of Springfield, Mass., is of Italian heritage, but rose to the upper ranks of the hierarchy in the traditionally Latino street gang. He was dubbed, quote, the Supreme East Coast Overseer at the time of this indictment. Michael Cacciatelli, and this is important to remember, he has identified as a Latin king and a social activist on behalf of the gang since at least the late 90s, so probably even before that. According to published reports in the Union News, in 1998, when he was 18, he was charged with receiving stolen property, Charged with gun possession, Cacciatelli told police, quote, he bought him from crack dealers in Springfield, Mass. Prosecutors said he already held a statewide leadership position within the gang. And that was even back then. So he was coming up through the ranks. He also, this is just kind of giving you a little background on him, all right, in his criminal history. He was indicted in a different county in Massachusetts uh, for assault and battery with a dangerous weapon, using a bat, single counts of assault and battery with a dangerous weapon. In this case, it was a knife. Malicious damage to property in excess of 250. I'll be honest, I don't really care about that. But yeah, you know, he was he was kind of doing his thing. Ketchatelli used his Mediterranean ties to help Latin King members. Now, this is really crazy, to infiltrate the historically Italian American Mount Carmel Society Social Club. I just put some pictures up of that. That is a very Italian social club. In the one picture, you see the Italian flag flying out front. According to an FBI affidavit filed in connection with the racketeering case, his uncles, David and Rudy Cacciatelli, and David Cacciatelli was a character all on his own. I put a picture up of him, was doing his thing in the underworld, had ties to the mob, uh, I'm sure, and Rudy did as well. I focused a little bit more on David because in the one thing I read, he was living with David, I believe, at the time of this indictment. Um, 
or David was at his house. We'll get to that part. But anyway, so yeah, he had not just, oh, he had some Italian blood, you know, running through him. No, he had serious mob ties. And they said in particular, it was to the Genovese crime family. So strong ties to the Mount Carmel Society Club, social club. He's able to infiltrate with the Latin Kings. At least two gang summits, check this out, at least two gang summits took place there earlier this year, according to the FBI. Mayor Dominic J. Sarno of Springfield, Mass., responded by announcing plans to yank the club's liquor and entertainment licenses, calling the allegations, quote, an embarrassment to Italians. So, man, they are very prideful people. So they have this gang summit, and a summit, for all of you that, you know, probably, I'm sure you can put two and two together, Okay, it's where the Latin Kings and the Italian mob are going to come together. And that's what I was talking about in the beginning, where it's important to remember where you're at, Springfield, Mass., because you've got a lot of different street gangs. And basically what they determined was on some of this stuff, it's easier to work together. And Latin people and Italian people are very prideful. If if you've known them, I haven't been around a lot of Italian people. I've been a lot of, around a lot of Latin, Latin American people, mainly Hispanic, of, you know, from Mexico, but very prideful people very proud of where they're from and their country. So it's really crazy. That's half the reason I did this story was just because it was so interesting to hear that they had a summit at this very Italian social club. And I went, when I was looking that social club up, there was the first article I pulled up is how the social club was still recovering from this indictment involving the Latin Kings, you know, four or five years ago. Uh, Cause remember it happened in 2019. So at social justice rallies, Ketchatelli self-identified as head of the Massachusetts chapter of the almighty Latin king and queen nation. Don't forget, they include the queen, they include the ladies in that. And as a spokesman for the gang, he said the gang was turning away from violence. Now, this is back in the 90s, so he's kind of trying to say, hey, yeah, we're turning away from violence, pointing to their decision not to retaliate after a rival gang shot at Latin king members uh, and beginning to engage in activism. And this is kind of what the Latin Kings do. I see a lot of this stuff where they're out representing. They got their colors on, but hey, they're promoting peace. They're promoting we don't do this. Um, and he's basically saying, instead of going back to the old ways of retaliation, I'm trying to find another way. Quote, Ketchatelli told a reporter, and that was back in 1997. Uh, they were interviewing, and this article goes on to talk about how a former law enforcement official who investigated Michael Ketchatelli in the 90s said Ketchatelli adopted the alternate, quote, Reyes surname, and that was solely to gain more credibility on the streets. I kind of thought that was a little funny uh, because it's like you know, Reyes, you know, Garcia. You're using these Latin names. It's like, God, man, I just, you know, people liked you for a reason. You rose to power for a reason. I'm not sure why he did that, but hey, whatever. So, quote, the Latin Kings Manifesto was very strict at the time. Its members were supposed to trace their heritage in some way back to Puerto Rico. But obviously, no one was checking credentials very carefully. Quote, and that was from a retired investigator. Said he was speaking on, but he basically didn't put his name on. He was speaking on condition of anonymity. Soon enough, though, he added, quote, King Merlin gained enough stature in the gang, so it didn't even matter. He gets in trouble in the 90s. He also, though, he catches a charge federally in 05 on another illegal firearms charge. He pleaded guilty. He was sentenced to three years in prison. He gets re- – and I read – there was a couple different – differing accounts. I read four years in one, three years in this one. But it, regardless, he gets released in 09 and has continued his rise through the ranks. And that was according to the latest indictment. So he gets released in 09 and this indictment comes down 10 years later. During the raid of their shared apartment – this is what I was talking about. He does live with David Ketchatelli. During their raid of their shared apartment in Forest Park – David Ketchatelli, though not accused of having any affiliation with the Latin Kings, was arrested and charged for having, having illegal ammunition under his bed. He pleaded not guilty. With longtime ties to the Springfield crew of the Genovese crime family, David Ketchatelli previously served an eight-month prison sentence for felony bookmaking. However, he has lately reinvented himself as an actor and social media personality who appears to have cozied up with none other than John Gotti Jr. Remember... Uh, those of you that don't remember John Gotti Sr., the Teflon Don, uh, famous, famous mobster, uh, was involved in the hit on Paul Castellano. Uh, look that up if you haven't already read about him. He's very, very famous. I'd be surprised if you haven't heard about him. If you're watching my channel right now, I'd be surprised if you haven't heard about John Gotti. But anyway, so we're getting to what the operation, how this indictment came out. So the name of this operation was called Operation Thrown Down. 
because it's Latin kings. There's a, you know, they're on a throne. Okay. Michael Cacciatelli sitting on a throne. The FBI says Michael Cacciatelli rose to the top of the organization even after he was charged and sent to prison more than a decade ago for his involvement with the Latin kings. He's 40 years old at the time of the indictment. He's in charge of the Latin King and Queen Nation. And they said he oversaw like leadership in 14 states. His goes by the name of King Merlin. He's based in Springfield, Mass., but he's the Supreme East Coast Regional Overseer of the Latin King. So those 14 states from Massachusetts to Florida. Goes on to talk about how they had blood ties to the Genovese crime family based in New York. And quote, his authority said, we believe under Cacciatelli's leadership, the eastern region of the Latin Kings is currently structured and organized and ran like La Cosa Nostra. And that was said by FBI special agent in charge of Boston, Joseph, man, butcher it, Bono Valanta. And uh, basically it talks about how Cacciatelli talks about – basically Cacciatelli took these guys from a normal street gang – to a large-scale criminal enterprise, superimposed with mafia-style rule. Um, yeah, so he gets picked up in 2019. He has a hearing where he says, all right, I'm going to intend to plead guilty. And that's like a year later. So this is coming towards the end of 2020 now, all right? More than a year after the sweeping federal roundup of the Latin King Street Gang members, Springfield's own Michael Cacciatelli signals intent to plead guilty to racketeering-related charges. Um Goes by King Merlin, was charged along with dozens of Latin kings and associates in December of 19 with racketeering, drugs, illegal gun charges, and attempted murders. Basically, they were talked dis- they got caught discussing and possibly putting out contract hits. In particular, two of his own gang members. According to a lengthy FBI affidavit filed in the case, Cacciatelli lorded over, quote, trials for members who flouted gang rules, identified targets of hits and assaults on rivals, and mediated disputes. The Latin Kings are a Chicago-based gang that has long had footholds in urban centers in Massachusetts. So, remember, he starts out activist, leader, then he becomes a statewide leader, now he becomes the supreme leader of the East Coast. But now he's starting to really get his hands dirty, having, quote, trials. You know, he's feeling himself. He's, he's the king. He's the almighty Latin king on the East Coast. Um, this is really interesting. I, I had to read you guys this part. The roundup on this indictment included a former Boston high school dean by the name of Sean Harrison. He was convicted of shooting at a student and working with gang leaders to, ins- to expose law enforcement informants. FBI informants told investigators Cacciatelli instructed underlings to, quote, smash and kill those he regarded as snitches and enemies. Some of those meetings that they had at the Mount Carmel Society Club in Springfield South End, according to the FBI, and they, <laughs> you can't emphasize this enough like we talked about. This is a place where these, these FBI guys are even saying this is a place where I used to bring my grandfather after Sunday family dinner in order to what? basically socialized with other Italians. And this guy's having gang meetings and trials to decide what to do with rats or snitches, or he's talking to the other Italian mob about how they can come together and be stronger in numbers. Um, The club had shut down during the pandemic, but anyway. So he ends up pleading guilty on April 6, 2021. Okay. At this time he's 41. Conduct enterprise affairs through a pattern of racketeering activity, um, commonly referred to as RICO charge, okay? And they just go on to talk about how violent the Latin kings are. Now, interestingly enough, oh, and really quick, he did organize and conspired to murder two members of the Latin kings who had accused him of cooperating with law enforcement. So I thought that was really interesting. We're going to tell you kind of why in a second. Um, Not that I'm saying anything. But he ends up only getting four years on this case. Remember how back in 05 he got three, four years? Well, he got another, he only got another four years for this. And I'm like, dude, you're the supreme East Coast leader of the almighty Latin King and Queen Nation, and you get four years? I don't know. You know, I, I don't know what all they had on him or didn't have on him, but I'm just kind of like, man, all these cases I cover, no matter the race, whether it's the white gangs, Hispanic gangs, the black gangs. I'm like, dude, what? Four years. So I, I don't know. Comment down below what I want to ask. Do you think he cooperated? I couldn't find anything that he for sure did. 
I want to know if you guys think he did cooperate or not. But really, really interesting story. I uh, really hope you guys appreciated this one. Just wanted to bring you guys something different. Always like to mix it up. Till next time. Peace.